Now, what year is that? Chicago Gay Pride Parade 2014. Jesus Christ, in the Bible, not I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Are you born again? We're not down here just to rail on homosexuals. We're here because there's a large crowd, and we're interested in getting what the Bible says in the people's ears. We're interested in getting what God said into your mind, into your heart, because you are a Bible moron. Give me the first five books in the Bible. Anyone? Just shout it out. First five books in the Bible. Everyone has an opinion about what the Bible said, and yet no one reads the Bible. Everyone thinks that what they're doing is correct without checking and finding out if God supports it or not. The problem with America is we got a bunch of effeminate men and a bunch of man-sized women, and we've got this thing turned around, and it's high time to get back to Bible preaching. You threw the Bible out of our public education system. You threw the Ten Commandments off of our government office buildings. You refuse when a man comes out and preaches. You think he's full of hatred when all he's doing is preaching the Bible. This is called Bible 101. You need to be born again. Get it? It's real, real simple. And the only reason you don't get it is because you don't want to get it. You chose a life of drunkenness and a life of lasciviousness. You chose a life of homosexuality. I say you chose it over top of the Word of God. These people are not born that way. Go ahead and believe the lie. Go ahead and believe it. But my friend, they chose to become a homosexual. I mean, myself, I love a man, be honest with you, I'll be real truthful with you, I love a man. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. But I don't want to have sex with Jesus Christ. I love my father. My father is a man. But I don't want to have sex with my father. You can love a man and not be a pervert. You can love a man and have respect for that man and line up and be obedient under the commands of God Almighty without being a pervert. You must be born again. Have you been born again? Jesus said you must be born again. I could care less about global warming and I'll be real honest with you, if you people don't quit your filthiness and you're fooling around, I'll tell you what you got. You got more tornadoes, more hurricanes, more hailstorms, more disease, more filthiness coming your way. God judges the sins of men on this earth and throws people that deny Christ into the lake of fire at the end of this life. But you can be judged for your sin right now, my friend. You can be judged for your filthiness while on this earth. AIDS is a direct retribution by God towards your filthy lifestyle, homosexual. You carry AIDS virus. That's a boy. Hold it up high. Hold on. I'd be proud of my IQ, too. Hold it up there. Get a Bible. Find out what God's got to say, not your dumb opinion. God's not interested in your opinion. God doesn't care that you go to church. I don't want you going to my church. I don't want your money. I want you to get saved. 
If I can prompt you to read your Bible, if I can encourage you to read the Bible, I'll do it. But let's be honest about it. You'd rather smoke one more joint. You'd rather go ahead and snort some cocaine. You'd rather shoot something up your arm than you would in believing on Jesus Christ. The reason you don't want God is because you want to live your filthy lifestyle. You know that God is going to expect you to change. You know that Jesus Christ is going to have you repent of your sin. And you don't want to do that. Heavens no. Because you'd have to give up your fornication. You'd have to give up your beer. And God would expect that out of you. My friend, you're just not going to do it. Well, I'm telling you that death is short and life is short. And that Bible says that your life is like a little vapor that appears for a time and then it vanishes away. And my friend, you're going to spend eternity in hellfire or you're going to spend eternity in a beautiful, wonderful place called heaven. And the choice is yours. Yes, there is a lovely place called heaven where there is no sin and there is no pain. And there is no old age. There is that wonderful place called heaven. But just like there's a place called heaven, there's a place called hell. Everyone that dies doesn't go to heaven. And when you die, you're not going to get judged then. What's going to happen to you is what you do with our Savior and our Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ, while you're on this earth, will determine whether you go to heaven or hell. I beg of you today, Take some time and read the Bible. Take some time and get to know the God of the Bible. Take some time and spend it on your knees doing something spiritual instead of something filthy. And get down there and get to know the God of the Bible. Bible. You know, the book that's been around before your great, 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 great grandmother. That book has been around forever and ever. And people have been uh, obeying it, and people have been disobeying it. And I'm telling you, the ones that disobey it end up in hell. Don't let that happen to you. That man over in Luke in chapter 16, that man in that terrible chapter, he said, send someone back to my brethren and tell them not to come to this terrible place. And that man was burning in hell. And we don't want you to go there. And we want you to get saved. And we want you to trust Jesus Christ. I think we have the police line here. Why do you think the barricades are around us only? Is it to keep us in? Or is it to keep these God-forsaken homosexuals out? Do you realize, my friend, that every serial killer that's ever been hung for mass murder was a homosexual? Do you know that Jeffrey Dahmer was a homosexual? you remember Jeffrey Dahmer's? The man with the eating disorder. Do you know that these gentlemen that go around and mass murder people are homosexuals? These people are perverted. Perverted. And if they had their way, they would charge us and beat us up. If they had their way to get away with it, they'd kill us like they do in other countries. I believe that Mr. Putin is right in that one point at least that he forbid homosexuals to come into the uh, Special Olympics and into the Olympics. The president of Uganda said, we will put these homosexuals in prison for 90 years if we catch them practicing this. Do you realize that over in Africa, almost every man, almost every woman, almost every child has the AIDS virus because of their homosexual activity? Jesus said, Him that cometh unto me, 
I will in no wise cast out. Give up your sin. Repent of your ungodliness. Stop your fornication. Stop your drunkenness. And come and repent at the foot of the cross and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is not a respecter of persons. He'll take you just like he took me. He took me just like he took Martin Luther. He took Martin Luther like he took so many others all down through history. And we found that God is true. And yet every man is a liar. Once you take the God of the Bible, once you begin to live for him, my friend, it's better than your lifestyle. You homos, if you're out there yet, I think most of the crowd now is probably people that are coming just to look at your perverted parade. But if you're a homosexual, please, I'm just reminding you that life is short and death is sure and sin is a curse and Jesus Christ is the cure. You think you've got something here with all of your buddies and slapping each other on the back? But my friend, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of man by Jesus Christ, your buddies are not going to be there. You're going to stand in front of God all by yourself, naked and then undone before God with a list of your sins. I've got one of those too. Don't mock God, young lady. That's not funny to mock God. You think because uh, nobody's talking about God anymore in this country, you can mock God and laugh at God. God will have him listen. One day that car you're in is going to turn over. One day that dog with rabies is going to bite you. One day that AIDS virus and that STD is going to catch up on you. And just like you laughed at God, God will laugh at you in your calamity. Just because you're 18 years old, don't think that you can't die. Plenty of people at 16 and 17 and 18 drop dead of overdoses. The number one cause of death amongst young people today is suicide. They've got nothing to live for. They've tried everything, including sexuality, including homosexuality, including drunkenness, including drugs, and it does not satisfy. It does not satisfy. I said it does not satisfy. Jesus Christ satisfies. Honey, I couldn't satisfy you. Jesus Christ is the only one that can satisfy you. And I agree with you. You definitely are sorry. I agree with that t-shirt. You are definitely sorry. You're sorry in the sight of God. You're sorry in the sight of the Bible. You're sorry in the sight of our church. We don't want you coming to our church. I say our teenagers know more Bible than you do. Our nine-year-old Sunday school students know more Bible than you do. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You're a Bible moron. You ought to quit. You ought to come to Jesus Christ. You ought to bring in your head. You come to Jesus Christ. Oh, that Bible says you need to be born again. How come you're not born again? It's the easiest thing in the world. It's like falling off a wagon. It's like taking a drink of water. You need to be born again. Why aren't you born again? That Bible said, Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's where you're going one day unless your name is in that book. Is your name in that book? Is your name been included on the Lamb's book of life? Well, I mean, when he opens that ledger up at the end of days, you can see your name.